Hello, hello. Welcome to Crazy E Games. Welcome back to Breath of the Wild. <laughs> so yeah, we're continuing the story today. We're going to be getting our glider, which is why I'm in front of the um, Temple of Time here, because that is where we're supposed to be going. Um, the Isolated Plateau from the Old Man. After you acquired the spirit orbs from the shrines, the old man told you that he'll be waiting in the place centered amid the four shrines before mysteriously disappearing dot 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 and yeah the centered amid the four shrines is the temple of time i go to the map here the shrine the shrine the shrine and this shrine and if you could draw an x of course temple of time but yeah as you can see i've done a bunch of um this is a really nice feature by the way <laughs> i've actually explored this place a little bit and uh, there was actually a lot of stuff that i've missed the first time, uh, like compared to the first time I played this game, and there was like this, um, a windy area. Was it here? No, 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 it was here. There's like this windy area here that I just like threw bombs, and the wind carried the bombs into this like, um, moblin base, moblin lair, <laughs> and I was able to kill everything. <laughs> there was like a bit of a moblin outpost here. Um, there's like this swamp or mud swamp thing where if you go in it you slowly sink until you die but there was like two chests here that i picked things up <laughs> and yeah i got a bunch of core rocks as well which will be useful later um i guess this is a little bit of a spoiler but uh you need to collect these seeds to trade into this character named hetsu which lets you have bigger inventory which is very useful <laughs> and uh yeah for the most part I just got really immersed in this game. I spent just hours <laughs> playing and exploring without really realizing the time. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it's already been however many hours. <laughs> and yeah, um, now we're back. There's still some areas that, like this corner, there might be stuff here that I haven't um, looked into yet. And of course, I didn't explore any of the Temple of Time yet since that's where we needed to go next. <laughs> and I'm thinking this is how... I'll probably do my videos in between story sections. I'll just like do all the side stuff or exploration and stuff or as much as I can that I feel comfortable doing. And then uh, when I come back into the story, I'll just kind of like give a summary of what I've done. But yeah, oops. During my adventures, um, I've actually found this Nintendo Switch shirt. <laughs> And uh, I'm wearing the Hillian trousers right now. I found that too, instead of the well-worn ones. And I was kind of surprised. Now um, Link looks like a, <laughs> a marketing person for Nintendo. Uh, going around asking Hillians whether they want to try out the Nintendo Switch. And they'll be like, what's a Nintendo Switch? And he'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> I just found this shirt and it, sounds, it looks kind of cool. <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, make our way to the Temple of Time. And... Uh, Get our paraglider from the old man. Well, that's kind of scary. There's just like a... A dead guardian right outside. Whoa! This is not the front door. I thought I could just walk right in. I didn't know the Temple of Time was like this. This wasn't like this in Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, was it? <laughs> so yeah, the... Um, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is what got me into this franchise as a whole. Um, for the N64 back in the days. <laughs> the N64 was like my very first console. And um, Ocarina of Time was my first experience of Zelda. And at the time I was actually really scared of that game. I remember um, playing it a little bit. Going into like the dark forest or the Kokiri Forest or the Lost Woods or whatever it's called and was like constantly just scared to, to continue moving and it was actually my sister that convinced me to continue to play. <laughs> it's all her fault that I've become such a nerd and a gamer. <laughs> I was actually scared to continue playing but my sister was really interested in the lore I guess and the fantasy elements of it and she just wanted to see the story unfold. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, that's just a little bit of um, a lobby prayer area. This is the actual Temple of Time. For some reason, I do remember having to 
go around a thing in Ocarina of Time to come up here. <laughs> Whoa, there's a statue of the goddess Helia here. Was there that in Ocarina of Time? <laughs> I kind of don't remember. I think it's probably faster to just swipe at all of these. Yes, 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 yes. So yeah, I've also picked up a lot of like newer weapons. Uh, oh no, my inventory is full. Just drop this one. I've picked up some resources and stuff around here too during out my exploration. Uh, how do I? Okay. Yeah, I've picked up some of this. I guess I can sort. No, that's not what I want. I can sort. I got some blue nightshade, some Hyrule herbs. Uh, this summer wing butterfly. Uh, this bladed rhino beetle, which apparently if you cook these, they can give you potions and stuff that increase attack and whatnot. And I think that'll actually be useful, and I probably should take advantage of it. <laughs> like I said in the previous video, the last playthrough I did on this on my own a long time ago, I never actually took advantage of that, so... It'll be nice to actually try it out this time around and see how effective it is. <laughs> Alright, let's uh talk to this statue and see what happens. Hey, uh, Goddess Helia, do you like Nintendo Switch? Um, I'm wearing a shirt for it, so it'll be cool. Whoa! Little does she know she's living inside the Nintendo Switch. Whoa! You who have conquered the shrines and claimed their spirit orbs, I can offer you great power. It appears you can you have claimed four spirit orbs. In exchange for four spirit orbs, I will amplify your being. So tell me, what is it that you desire? I think heart is probably what I'll go for first, because um what I understand, I guess this is another spoiler, but <laughs> this gameplay is going to be full of spoilers as I kind of prepare myself for what's going on. But uh, I guess it's not, it's kind of a spoiler, but not a spoiler at the same time. At some point, we get the Master Sword, and in order to hold the Master Sword out of the Master Sword pedestal, pedal, pedestal, you have to have, um, I don't remember how many hearts, but you had to be strong enough, essentially. You had to prove that you're strong enough, so... <laughs> Ah, uh, you wish for another heart container, yes? Yep. I shall grant the power you see. Up, 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 up. Wow, that's a giant heart. Heart container, your life force have been strengthened. Increasing your maximum number of hearts by one. That seems so, like, hard-earned, too, just to have one heart. I have to do, like, so much stuff. <laughs> oh! Is that the old man? Ah, the blessing of the goddess have made you that much more resilient, I see. <laughs> here I am! Get up here quickly. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> oh man. One of the things that kind of intimidated me with uh, this exploration was I think I did all this exploration within maybe like two and a half hours and uh, for me <laughs> having like a full-time job and other things other hobbies and spending time with friends and family and stuff having two and a half hours free it's really rare for me and I'm really intimidated seeing as how like this is just a tiny piece of the map. And uh, thinking about Tears of the Kingdom, I am even more intimidated because it's not only going to be the landmass, there's also going to be uh, like sky islands and stuff as well. So essentially, you can think the world is like doubled <laughs> and potentially like two and a half times or three times more because apparently there's like rumors that there's underground areas as well. Because in the trailers, there's like... Uh, minecarts going into what seems like underground magma lava chambers and stuff. And uh, yeah, people are saying like, oh, maybe there's actually like more going underground and there's like underground areas in the desert and stuff too. <laughs> so yeah, ooh. 
There's an easy ladder? I thought there was like a, gonna be a really hard way to get up. <laughs> but yeah. What's funny is that from what we understand now, the skies will be just filled with um, islands in Tears of the Kingdom. And uh, for to us Legend of Zelda nerds, we're like, wow, that's awesome. But one of the things I've kind of noticed was that that was kind of the same thing for Sonic Frontiers, which um, looks looked like it had heavy inspirations uh, from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and stuff. And they also put random floating stuff in the sky. But then that wasn't really uh, received well by the community and lots of like people made fun of that. I guess that's just the difference between uh, execution. The ideas are the same, they're just executed differently. <laughs> In Sonic Frontiers, it was just kind of like laid out randomly and not really explained. And it's just, oh, it's just one of those Sonic things and you're just supposed to accept it. Whereas in Tears of the Kingdom, it seems like there's some sort of uh, ancient technology or ancient magic or ancient um, society or something that has the technology to bring those things floating up in the sky. <laughs> and uh, it kind of fits in with this ma magical, fantastical world. <laughs> Which is uh, pretty nice, I guess. <laughs> Alright, I thought coming up here was going to be a lot more difficult. But, um, it was actually pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> well done there, young one. Now then, the time has come to show you who I truly am. I was King Rome what? Bosphoramus Hyrule. I was... The last leader of Hyrule. What? No way. A kingdom which no longer exists. <sighs> oh, that's unfortunate. But do you like Nintendo Switch? <laughs> I am a sales marketing person for them. The Great Calamity was merciless. It devastated everything in its path. Lo, oh, man. A century ago. It was then that my life was taken away from me. And since that time, here I have remained in spirit form. I did not think it wise to overwhelm you while your memory was still fragile. So rather than that, I thought it best to assume a temporary form. Forgive me. Like I think you ghost. are now ready. Ready to hear what happened 100 years ago. Oh, okay. To know Calamity Ganon's true form, one must know the story from an age long past. The Demon King was born into this kingdom, but his transformation into malice created the horror you see now. Stories of Ganon were passed from generation to generation in the form of legends and fairy tales. But there was also a prophecy. The signs of a resurrection of Calamity Ganon are clear, and the power to oppose it lies dormant beneath the ground. We decided to heed the prophecy and began excavating large areas of land. It wasn't long before we discovered several ancient relics made by the hands of our distant ancestors. Whoa. These relics, the divine beasts, were giant machines piloted by warriors. We also found the Guardians, an army of mechanical soldiers who fought autonomously. This coincided with ancient legends oft repeated throughout our land. We also learned of a princess with a sacred power and her appointed knight chosen by the sword that seals the darkness. It was they who sealed Ganon away using the power of these ancient relics. One hundred years ago, there was a princess set to inherit a sacred power and a skilled knight at her side. It was clear that we must follow our ancestors' path. We selected four skilled individuals from across Hyrule and tasked them with the duty of piloting the Divine Beasts. With the princess as their commander, we dubbed these pilots champions, mm -hmm. a name that would solidify their unique bond. They're Gundam pilots. 
The princess, her appointed knight, and the rest of the champions were on the brink of sealing away Ganon. But nay. Ganon was cunning, and he responded with a plan beyond our imagining. Oh no! from deep below Hyrule Castle, seized control of the Guardians and the Divine Beasts, and turned them against us. The Chelmites oh lost their lives, those residing in the castle as well. The appointed knight gravely wounded and elapsed while defending the princess. And thus, the kingdom of Hyrule was devastated absolutely by Calamity Ganon. However, the princess survived to face Ganon alone. Link, you Whoa. are our final hope. The fate of Hyrule rests with you. That princess was my own daughter, my dear Zelda. And the courageous knight who protected her right up to the very end. That knight was none other than you, Link. What? No way. You fought valiantly when your fate took an unfortunate turn. And then you were taken to the Shrine of Resurrection. Here you now stand, revitalized 100 years later. The words of guidance you have been hearing since your awakening are from Princess Zelda herself. Even now, as she works to restrain Ganon from within Hyrule Castle, she calls out for your help. However, my daughter's power will soon be exhausted. Once that happens, Ganon will freely regenerate himself, and nothing will stop him from consuming our land. Oh no. Considering that I could not save my own kingdom, I have no right to ask this of you, Link. But I am powerless here. You must save her, my daughter, and do whatever it takes to annihilate Ganon. Okay, sounds good. Somehow, Ganon has maintained control over all four divine beasts, as well as those guardians swarming around Hyrule Castle. I believe it would be quite reckless for you to head directly to the castle at this point. I suggest that you make your way east out to one of the villages in the wilderness. Okay. Follow the road out to Kakariko Village. There you will find the Elder Impa. She will tell you more about the path that lies ahead. Consult the map on your Sheikah Slate for the precise location of Kakariko Village. Make your way past the twin summits of the Dueling Peaks. From there, follow the road as it proceeds north. I guess that's our next mission, to uh, get to Kakariko Village. Hmm. Go on, here is the paraglider, just as I promised. Paraglider, an item that you received from the king on the Great Plateau. Um, the late king. <laughs> it allows you to sail through the sky. Press X while you're in the air to use it. Thank you. We will use this well to save us from fall damage, among other things. With that, you should be able to safely fly off the cliffs surrounding this area. And, uh, I think that's it. <laughs> I've told you everything I can. Link, you must save Hyrule. 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 Okay, rest in peace. We'll do our best. Destroy Ganon. Seek out Impa. I think Destroy Ganon just stays there the entire time. And uh, you never really get to complete it because um, the save before you defeat Ganon is before you defeat Ganon. And when you defeat Ganon, you don't get to save anymore. <laughs> so that that objective, I think, is always going to be there. <laughs> always never, or fated to never be completed. <laughs> uh, 
how this is dropped when it's these weirdos, weirdo bows. So yeah, a few things about that, um, that cutscene. Um, the champions, uh, this weird thought just popped into my head where it's just like, yeah, there's these really, really cool champions <laughs> for Breath of the Wild, which, uh, Breath of the Wild Link was, uh, put into Super Smash Bros. And I thought, like, it, I just popped into mind, like, why didn't they put those champions as well into uh, Breath of the Wild, or Bre into Smash Bros? They seem, like, perfect for it, right? Like, there's Rivali, the... I guess he's, like, really close to Falco. <laughs> he's, like, this blue bird, just like Falco. <laughs> and, um, he, he uses bows and stuff, which is really cool. Um, there's Urbosa, the, um... The Gerudo lady with the twin swords. Wait, no, she has a sword and a shield, I think. Uh oh. And uh, Mifa with the cool, like, trident and, like, water powers and swimming and stuff. And uh, I don't remember the Goron's name. <laughs> this, like, huge, hulking Goron dude. They had, like, Bowser and uh, Ridley and King DDD and stuff, so. Wouldn't it make sense to have someone like that? Or it would make sense to have someone like that too. Yeah, I just thought that was kind of um, a missed opportunity for Smash Bros. There's still like Zelda and Ganondorf and I think Young Link and Toon Link. So there's three Links, but they couldn't um, put some of these cool uh, champions from Breath of the Wild in there. There's like all these, all these different uh, Fire Emblem main characters. <laughs> guy and girl versions of them but uh those four champions uh weren't allowed in <laughs> that feels kind of weird ah well i guess um the developers had to make their decisions <laughs> a decision to add uh, minecraft steve but yeah um i guess we need to go here now just seek out impa all right time to use our glider Oh, it's so nice to have a glider. Ooh. I like the controls of the glider on this one a lot more than in Genshin Impact. Yeah, since I do Genshin Impact for my channel for the most part, <laughs> as a main like game that I play for my channel, I'm going to be making a lot of uh, references and comparisons to that game. <laughs> Even though this game came out first and a lot of things Genshin Impact references off of this game. I got like this 14 damage sword, which is um, pretty sweet. I think that's the strongest sword I've had for a long time now. Alright, let's just straight there. Wait, are there any towers along the way that I can activate and reveal the map? So you gotta be sneaky. Oh yeah, another thing I wanted to- Woo! Press the wrong button there. I wanted to jump, but I hit the uh, B button, which is to run. <laughs> B button is usually what I would normally press for jump in other games. Cool. Oh, yeah. I don't think Flurry is good for these guys since they die in one hit. <laughs> oh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, in that cutscene where uh, King Rome was talking to us and... Uh, Link is just like standing here with his Nintendo, this bright red Nintendo Switch shirt. It's almost like one of those uh, isekai animes where some like nerd gets isekai'd into a fantasy world and they're wearing like their nerd shit. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, I'm in this fantasy world and I'm giving an, uh, this grand quest to save the kingdom. <laughs> just give him some like glasses or something and he's like, oh, like Re Zero or something. <laughs> but yeah, that's what like that cutscene. Uh, kind of like reminded, not reminded, but invoked uh, the uh, thought in me. It's just like this bright red like Nintendo Switch shirt. <laughs> he's he's Isai Kaid into the sword. <laughs> yeah, and it, it kind of ruined that scene. It was really serious. And then uh, here's Link in his bright red Nintendo Switch shirt. <laughs> A rusty halberd. Uh, do I have any other sticks? I can probably get rid of this. Yeah. 
This sticks are pretty useful. He's pretty long reach. I think if you like go up against these things, you might be able to search them. Okay, maybe not. Three. I'll just imagine. Right. So I am here without a map. I feel like since I'm here anyway, I might as well take a gander at any easy reachable chests or challenges. Oh, that's another helper. I don't think I need another one at this point. Even if I wanted it, I don't have the inventory space for it. Yeah. Oh, there's a different bow here. Uh... Oh, this one. Wooden bow. This bow may not be the most reliable for battling monsters, but it is excellent for hunting animals. Alright. Oh no, my woodcutter's axe is almost broken. That's not good. Okay. You can use this to the same effect. Oh yeah, another thing in that uh, King Rome cutscene. That um, kind of reminded me, or uh, made me think of something was um, so Link was in the resurrection chamber for a hundred years, which essentially like kept him young. Where I'm assuming the technology healed him and kept him young for a uh, for a hundred years. But um, how exactly does Zelda stay young then? Oh, there's a swarm of bats. I don't really know how to deal with a swarm of bats. Is she, like, using her powers to kind of keep, uh, Ganon? Oh! They disappeared. Okay, uh. Anyways, is uh Zelda kind of using her powers to keep Ganon sealed there, which is the reason why um why she stays young. She's kind of has like stasis essentially, but on within uh Hyrule Castle, keeping everything there. And the reason we see like a huge shadow flowing around, that's just like the evil aura we see. It's not actually Ganon. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna think is happening. That's why she also stays young. It's because of the, uh, the Triforce of Wisdom power or the Goddess Helia power or something. But yeah, uh -huh. let's get rid of this one. Go! Oh. <laughs> I kind of wish there was an easier way to drop shields. Or any weapon, but for the matter. Like if here, I press down on the, on the D-pad and hold or something, you automatically drop it. Same with here. Because <laughs> down is uh, essentially to whistle, and you, there's like no selection on the T bat for down. So if I'm here and I. I guess I can't really press down, but you don't want to drop runes anyways. But for this and this, and uh, this and this. I guess you don't want to drop arrows either, but you can hold down here to like drop a bow. That would have been nice to have, but I guess um, we can't really. We can like hindsight make all these different comments and stuff maybe that'll be a thing in uh, tears of the kingdom all right an easy chest Ooh. rupees those are my first uh 20 rupees ah my first uh 20 rupees towards being a millionaire what are those i thought that was enemies but it looks like those are our resources why did a bunch of rocks just fall down? Is this place haunted? I kind of want to pick all that up. Uh, 
Uh, I guess I won't get my... I, I'll, I'll use this bow. <laughs> I've actually got a good amount of arrows now. Exploring uh, the Great Plateau has actually loaded me up with a lot of uh, resources. Mushroom. I think if you cook these, they give you like... Running speed. Oh no, there's a bunch of... I was gonna say Healy Churls. <laughs> There's a bunch of bokoblins there chasing a boar. <gasps> There's a deer. Let's hunt this deer. Uh-oh. I use a not as good sword. This one. Woo! You guys are gonna scare the deer away. Oh, he noticed us. Ah, he's running. Stupid. This is your guys' fault, you stupid skeletons. I blame it on you guys. Oh. Well, I thank you. Oh, yeah. I also got some of the choo-choo shells, too. Ow. Oh, from exploring the Great Plateau as well. Uh, that's uh, unfortunate I wasn't able to get that deer. I think they give you better meat. I don't remember actually. They might just give you the same thing as uh, boar. There's like big boy moblins out there. Nice. I don't know how to deal with. Like, I don't want to use up all my bomb arrows on those. Is, is there like a better way to deal with that? There's a fox over there. Oh, hello. Let's use my better sword. Oops. I wanted to do like a sick reflect, but that needs work. I think I can do this better. I'm better at timing this. Moblin horn. This splendid horn once grew atop the head of a moblin. It can't be used in normal food recipes, but it does have some use as an ingredient mixing elixirs. Moblin Fang, a sharp fang obtained from a moblin. It's too hard to be reshaped into a tool, but it can be tossed in a stew with some critters to create elixirs. Okay. There was a fox there. Watch out! He's still high. Get him! What do you drop? Raw meat. Oh, he also drops what, um... What? Uh, leave me alone! Oh, I think I scared them away. Yeah, but that fox also dropped the same as boars. It's not gonna come back, right? It's also daytime. Oh, alright. I think a lot of times you climb to the top of these giant poles, there might be Oroks there, but it takes so long. And, uh... You need like to recharge your stamina halfway, especially in the early game, where I don't have that big of a stamina bar. So I'm not gonna do that. Hey, man, isn't wouldn't it be awesome in real life? You can just walk up to things and be like, "Oh, here's a really valuable thing." <laughs> I guess if that happened, then everyone would be rich, or uh, all of the good places will be <laughs> found right away. <laughs> And then, uh, all the good stuff we found eventually, and then, uh, we'll be back to where we are now, where you really have to work to find things. I thought I saw a shrine in the distance. In this direction. Was I mistaken? Maybe it's a little further up. That guy's a mob. No, my broadsword. It is breaking. Wow, I did really well there in that fight. I was able to parry like everything. I don't want to get rid of this sword yet. It seems I'll get rid of this hand. This hoe might actually be better. I'll get rid of this. Oh yeah. Yeah, this hoe is really good. I didn't read the description, but that's okay. 
<laughs> I've picked up a lot of things while playing by myself. Oh, here it is. Should we do it? Or should we just unlock it for the, um... For the teleport. Hmm. Nice. Bosh Kala Shrine. Uh, let's just unlock it. I'll do these on my own time. I think you can use these as teleport points even if you haven't finished it. And uh, if I go here... Oh. Yeah, if you go over, it's orange. Even though you can teleport to it, I think. Yeah, you can still teleport to it. But it's orange on the map, telling you, like, you still need to do it. So, which is really nice for those who kind of don't want to bother with that. You can still get the benefit of the um, teleport waypoint without having to actually spend the time to complete it. Especially if, like, um, the person really wants to just experience the overworld and to explore and not have to do like tedious challenges <laughs> be forced to do tedious challenges every now and then there's a korok puzzle there but i won't um i won't go there our first human being we, that we've seen uh, we gotta use our cool sword and our cool shield just so he's impressed and we're gonna see if we can sell him a nintendo switch hey there um I am a Nintendo Switch representative. Would you like to buy a Nintendo Switch? It has uh, great portability and a great library of games. Aww. Rigo, I may be somewhat used to seeing bad omens by now, but that... Well, let's just say it's better than most. What is he seeing? What is he looking at? Is it Death Mountain he's looking at? Aww. Hey, you have a really cool spear. We're doomed, I mean. I mean, don't panic. Sorry, who are you? Have we met? Well, doesn't matter who you are, really. I was getting tired of talking to myself, so you've come at a good time. By the by, those strange things that popped out of the ground, did you see them? Oh, all the different towers and stuff popped up, and he's, I guess, referencing them. Is there one over there? I think I do vaguely see a tower in the distance there, and he might be just looking at that. I did see them, yes. I'm not talking about mushrooms here. I'm talking about those towers. They seem to have popped up all over the place. And that's not the only strange thing that's happened. Those long, deserted shrines suddenly started glowing. You know what this means, don't you? The end is here. With all this craziness happening, I've been keeping an eye on that thing. Just to see if it suddenly starts uh, moving, you know. Oh, he's watching the... Um... Wait, is he? Is he watching the... Um guardian over there hmm oh there's a stable over there should i kind of check that out oh man <laughs> my uh i guess adhd <laughs> i don't know i'm not really like uh diagnosed with adhd i haven't really seen a doctor about it but man i get distracted really easy and i guess it's like easy to say that and maybe i shouldn't <laughs> maybe it's not proper to say that but yeah i'm like just looking all over the place like oh i should i should go there oh i should go there Oh, I should go there, but really, I should really focus on getting to Kakariko Village and uh, meeting with Impa. Oh, uh, what thing? Oh. I'm talking about the Guardian, of course. Haven't you heard the old stories about Hyrule? See that thing over there? The one shaped like an overturned urn? That is what I'm talking about. Oh. Did you know some of them ha can move? One of them once chased me down and tried to kill me. This one here? No, it was a different one. That one was closer to the castle, but before the forest. When you, they spot you, they shoot blue beams of light at you. Man, I was so sure that was the end for me. I was prepared for the worst. But I somehow managed to escape into the nearby woods. Mm -hmm. You think it was my lightning-fast reflections that saved me? Oh yeah, probably. Ha, I wish. Truth is, I just got lucky. Anyway, I hear guardians like that still wander around uh, Hyrule Castle. Be careful. Okay, thank you. You're the first person I've met, a uh, live person I've met, outside of, uh, or ever since waking up. <laughs> you are now my best friend because you're the only fr only person. You're also my worst friend in that uh, category as well. <laughs> He's totally gonna buy a Nintendo Switch, by the way. He saw it, our like bright white shirt, and we're like, oh, that sounds really good. Oh yeah, you can sit by the fire to change the time, essentially. Oh, but that stable is so close. 
I think I see a shrine next to it as well. Uh, we'll, we'll keep walking this way. And uh, we'll probably, at the very least, do that tower to reveal the map here. Hello, cranes. Oh yeah, another thing about that cut King Rome cutscene. That was I was reminded while talking to about that guy. Um Wait, what was it? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh we'll just continue. <laughs> hmm, this might actually prove to be kinda of difficult. Let's uh dispatch these guys. They're just having fun, just uh, playing games and dancing. Oh, thanks. Money! Rusty swords break really easily. I guess they're rusted, that's why. Ah, <laughs> uh, I was hoping it was gonna be like arrows or something. <laughs> Um, I'm going to Let's see if there's anything in here. Money! I'm gonna be rich. Money! And cooked crabs. A whole crab slow roasted in this shell. The soft, flaky flesh pairs nicely with the scent of the charred shell uh, for a meal that assaults all five of your senses in all the best ways. <laughs> that sounds like a good time. Nice, I broke them both at the same time. Alright. More arrows! You can never have too many arrows. Nice, okay. We shall continue. Oh, there's uh, more rocks here. Just use this. Ow. No, the current is taking those things away. So what you can do here is actually this. And if you have the... Oh, yes. Karak Tentacle. This can only be obtained from an Octorok type enemy. It's too acidic for cooking, but it's highly valued as an ingredient for elixirs. Octorok Balloons. This inflatable Octorok organ has a lot of lift, so attach it to items you want to see float. Hold it in your hands, then place it on an object to attach it. Yeah, the Octorok Balloons are pretty useful to have. Whenever you see a body of water, you want to we must scan it. <laughs> I find. So if I do this, can I freak them out? Sometimes they like get so freaked out that they jump themselves onto the shore. I looked at them the wrong way and they flew away. Hey, Froggy. Hmm. Bye-bye. 
Silent Shroom. Silent Mushroom that grows softly in the door, uh, in the forest at night. Uh, that glows uh, softly, not grows. <laughs> Cooking it in a dish unlocks the nutrients in its cap, resulting in a meal that will allow it to move silently. I am really easily distracted by all this. Raw prime meat. A fresh, high-quality piece of animal meat. This stuff isn't easy to come by, so savor it. We could over, uh, to cook it to recover more hearts. Yeah, I don't want to go up that thing. Hey, there's a dude here. Was it the same dude from before? Who's there? Hi. Hey, you a traveler? Grab a spot by the fire if you like. I'm a traveling merchant named Gira. Oh yeah, the thing I wanted to talk about was... Um, King Rome was like, oh, I'm the last king of Hyrule. So who's actually ruling everyone here? Um, I guess I was reminded about that because that person I saw on the bridge was the first person I saw. And it's like, well, there's people here. There must be some sort of um, government. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, no, there there isn't. There, there's just like a bunch of ranch and little communities here and there. And it's all like uh, merchant, mercantilism. They trade... Uh, things that they need off of each other in order to survive kind of thing. <laughs> I guess there is kind of a, a government or society-ish thing in the desert with the Gerudo. But in Hyrule Plains, it still feels just like fresh out of Apocalypse and things are just starting to grow again, like in terms of human society. <laughs> There's just little uh, groups of humans here and there scattered all about. <laughs> Crazy times we live in, eh? I go oh, you're Canadian. I'd go into the forest. All if I could do a Canadian, like, um, an East Canadian accent, or wait, yeah, East Canadian accent, like a Newfoundland accent, I would, but I can't. <laughs> I go into the forest all of, all on my own to get my wares, oh. but there are far safer ways to get them, such as buying from travelers like you. So, do you uh, happen to have anything rare? You'd be interested in selling? Uh, we'll see. We'll see what we got. Oh, oops. I pressed the wrong button again. Even the areas near civilization are full of monsters these days. Just strolling through the woods can be dangerous. Be careful, you hear. Yeah. It's you. I want to buy. What do you sell here? Ooh, swift carrot? I have a feeling I can get these pretty easily. And I don't even have that much money. Uh, I want to sell. Let's sell... What do I have a few of? Let's sell some key swing. How many do you want to sell? Wait, how much money do I get? Oh, two rupees each. So if I sell, I guess, 15, let's say, I'll get 30 rupees. Yeah, that works. Wow, I just almost doubled the amount of money I have. Oh, man. I wish uh, I can double my money in real life. That would be awesome. <laughs> and I have this axe. Mine is broken and um, I don't really need... You can have this stupid club. Where are you planning on going with my axe? It's okay, you can have it. Sorry for hollering at you like that. It's just the times we live in. No one's going to be get mad if you pick up something that's just lying around. If something is important to someone... They wouldn't let it out of their sight. Well, thanks for the axe. I can chop some trees now. I don't think I can even go up that at this point, can I? Let's try going up that, actually. And then we'll see how time is for this video. Examine. Proxim bitch. Drooling peak stable. <gasps> okay, here's the plan. I'll go up that, and I'll go to the stable. And then we'll call it there. Does that sound good? <laughs> Oh, it's another Korok thing. This is kind of dangerous. So I'm going to use this. Oh no! So you go underneath it, I think that's probably the worst thing you can do. Because it'll also break it. Then you have- then you're really out of luck. Uh oh. I didn't actually create a thing, but I think it's pretty close. Haha, <laughs> 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 you found me! Oh, thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. 
Unlike Genshin Impact, those guys have just like quick dialogue. If you find um, Aranara or whatever out in the wild in Sumeru in Genshin Impact, they have like this huge dialogue thing all, all the time. It's just like, oh, I don't want to hear you talk. I guess that's like a general problem with uh, Genshin Impact. <laughs> For whatever reason, like every character wants to tell you their life story. <laughs> and it's a little bit annoying. <laughs> Ah, oh, I forgot to sell Nintendo Switch to that traveling merchant there. Uh, I'm a terrible isekai uh, Nintendo Switch sales representative. Uh-oh. Shouldn't have done that second thing, but uh, good thing uh, I was pretty close to this ledge. Ooh. Ooh. Come on, Link. You're almost there. You can do it. So that section there is like slanted in a way that probably drains your stamina faster. But uh, if you've noticed, if you go up ladders, it's difficulty to traverse, I guess. It's so easy that it actually doesn't cost any stamina. <laughs> Which is nice. It's a nice little detail. Chica Tower activated. Ah, oh, such grand music. Give me map information. Scanning area. Loading. Please wait. Please do not turn off the console. How interesting that they made data transfer like a drop of liquid in this. <laughs> Wow! I'm halfway there. So, at this rate, <laughs> I feel like this series is going to have like 50 plus videos. <laughs> I either need to really change the way I play this game to cut down the amount of videos, make or make my videos just really long and kind of just uh, go with it and just accept that, <laughs> that that's going to just be a thing. Or, I don't know, <laughs> stop dicking around so much. Stop going into all the little places, doing all the core rocks, and trying to collect every resource I see on the way. <laughs> but yeah. He opened up a bit more of the map, which is pretty good. Uh, Shika Slate updated. Additional functionality detected. Additional functionality? Searching for shrines. Sensor reacts when you are close to shrines that you have not yet visited. If you head in the direction where the shrine is strongest, or the reaction is strongest, you should be able to find a shrine. Uh, you can enable or disable the Shika sensor with Y on the map screen. Okay. So is that automatically on? Or do I need to turn that on? Shika sensor now operational. The sensor indicator has been mi uh, placed near the minimap. Search for shrines by moving in the direction with the strongest signal. So that's the like Wi-Fi signal that you see on top of the th the thermometer now. All right. So yeah, now that we got in a tower, we can actually just go straight down. I think there's shrines on the top of the mountain. Uh, a lot of times you see those birds flying around. I think there's one shrine on each side that uh, they're like related or something. But yeah, we're we're actually gonna head to the stable. So wow, we're so high up. I think if I did this in real life, I'd be so scared. <laughs> There's this like... Would it be like a circus challenge or something? Where uh, you just hang on a bar for two minutes, and if you can do that, um, you win the prize. And uh, it, it's really trick... it tricks the people. They're like, oh, hanging, that's really easy. I could probably do that. But uh, it's actually a lot harder than most people think. <laughs> Like, go to a playground. Well, actually, that's probably not a good idea. If you can find, like, a chin-up bar or a pull-up bar or something, just, like, time yourself and see how long you can hang for. <laughs> it's actually really hard. The amount of grip strength and endurance you need in order to do, to, to do it is hard. And, yeah, you can see Link there just hanging on that uh, glider for such a long time. It's just, like, if I did that in real life with no safety or anything, I'd be so scared. <laughs> Oh, there's a shrine right here. That's the one it's beeping at. 
I'm also not gonna do this shrine. I'll do the, all these shrines and stuff on my own time. Skip. Just unlock the uh, teleport. I'm about to lose my sledgehammer though. I don't know. I don't know where I would be able to get a new one. I guess I can also use bombs to do that. But, um. They blow up, like, everything everywhere. And then you gotta chase down, like, the. Um. Uh, what do you call it? Like, the opal and amber and stuff. Which is a little annoying. I wanna avoid that. That was a bow. Wow, this bow and this bow is like the same damage, but I assume this is just more um, durable. Traveler's bow, which is one stronger than that vocal bow I dropped. There's a person on that side. I'm meeting so many new friends. Interesting. Uh oh. I'll bring this with me. I wonder if I can. Can I get further? Did I get them all? Did I get them all? That guy's still on fire. Oh, I got them all! <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> I just dropped a huge boulder on a bomb, or one of those barrels. Why would you stand near explosives anyway? Or hang out near explosives? But like, we're supposed to be using it against you! You weren't supposed to use it against us. That's not how it's supposed to work. That's not how it was supposed to be designed. Oh, there's a... I'm gonna throw this thing away. And uh, pick this up. What is this? Um, I think my hoe is stronger than this, but that's a pokey stick, right? I have not used like this thing yet. <laughs> uh, let's grab that chest and uh, keep going. A boomerang? What? I don't remember this being in this game. This throwing weapon was originally used by the force, building Koroks. Its unique shape allows it to return after being thrown. So do you actually have to, like, catch it? Wait, 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 wait. How does this work? So you have to actually, like, hit A or whatever to catch it. I actually never used the boomerang in this game. I didn't realize it was a thing. I must have known it was a thing. I just kind of ignored it because I didn't know how to use it properly. Because in the middle of battle, when it comes back... You had to like spam the catch button. What happens if I hold up? Let me eat and not hit the A button and see what happens. Yeah, it just it just flies away. So you have to like spam in order to catch it. But yeah, we've made it to this stable, which is nice. So there's a shrine here as well. And some weird snails? Sneaky river snail. This large glow-in-the-dark snail lives in fresh water. When cooked in a dish, it heightens your senses so you can move about silently. Okay. Some frogs here too. What? How do I get above this? Oh. The answer is quite simple. <laughs> okay. Next new question. How do I get out? I can't actually... How do I actually get out? I've done goofed. Can I shoot fire at it to burn it, potentially? Fire arrows. No? Do I actually have to complete this shrine in order to get out? 
Can't break these. Hmm, can I climb on this? No, I can't. I'm stuck. I guess I'll have to do this. The water guides. Oh, did they want me to get in and not get out because then um, this will somehow teach me how to get out or give me some way to get out? Oh boy, this looks kind of uh, dangerous. Wait, how do I get up there? I want that. Okay, if I can do this... I just continue to make stairs? Hey, this is kind of cool. Don't push me up! <laughs> Purple Rupee! Ah. Just about doubled my money again. Man, I'm doubling my money constantly. I'm gonna be rich in no time. Alright, I see what they want me to do here. They want me to... Put one here. Right? I probably need to, like, put one... here to guide the ball a little bit more. And then I'm going to have to put one there, so that... The ball bumps into it and falls down. Hmm. Eh. Ah. Eh? I have a feeling the water is still gonna be there after I. Uh, oh no! When I, when I finish it, I teleport outside of the uh, shrine. Right? No, no, it's just on that pedestal. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm still not gonna be able to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the spirit orb. Whing. Thank you. We'll defeat Ganon. Don't worry about it. It's not even a thing. Ah, the things disappear when you complete it. The exchange mask rumor? That is, um... Teleportation rumors. That is, uh, DLC stuff, right? EX treasure. Ancient mask. Oh, fairy clothes. Oh, yeah, more outfits. Good evening, Sagesa. Sagesa? Sagesa? Good evening. Don't see a whole lot of travelers passing through here. You know, with how peaceful it is around here, it's sometimes easy to forget that the world almost ended years ago. Oh. But there are still monsters wandering around, and the area near Hyrule Castle is especially dangerous. If you're going to be traveling, you should know a thing or two about elixirs. Um, elixirs? Ah. You can make elixirs by mixing bugs and other small creatures with uh, monster parts. Most of them are no good for refilling your heart health, but they can have a lot of unique effects. Some elixirs can increase your speed, Others raise a resistance to extreme temperatures. Oh. I'm actually impressed that you've made it this far without any knowledge of elixirs. I can't have it on my conscience if something happens to you from here, so I'll give you one of mine. Hasty elixir. Grants a low level haste effect, uh, which boosts your movement speeds while running, swimming, or climbing. Okay. Using a hasty elixir increases your run speed, so I use it to escape from enemies or any time I need to hurry. The recipe is just hightail lizards and monster parts, so I usually have a stock of 10 or so on hand. Okay, well thank you. I like relic. Let's actually go ahead and build that and see how it is. Wow, there's horses here! We're gonna get our own horse. Possibly in the next video, question mark? I guess you'll have to stay tuned to find out. So yeah, I've actually never made elixirs, so... 
I take some high tail lizards. Just take both of them. And some monster parts. Um I guess I have a lot of this 69. Let's take a bunch of these. Or do I just need one? Uh yeah, cook. Hood. Five minutes of haste. So yeah, I've never actually used this, and uh, climbing and swimming has been a pain, uh, pain point for me in my past playthrough. But if you can increase your swimming and climbing with this, uh, I'm really stupid to not take advantage of it. <laughs> Barb the winds. All right, I'm just gonna kind of go around, maybe talk to some more of these people, and then um, we'll call it there. <laughs> Dark armor. Yeah, those cuckoos. Can you pick them up? I think, um... Oh, no. You, I need to put you back in your uh, little pen. I think if you attack them, they will... It'll do that, like, classic Zelda thing where uh, a bunch spawn and start, like, attacking you back. Um... Can you feed the dogs in this game? I don't remember. Right here. Hello. He's eating it. He's eating it. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? You are. Wow, this dog is huge. He's bigger than Link. If he stood up, he's bigger than Link. This is a giant dog. <laughs> oh, there's a woodcutter's axe here. So these stables will probably be a really good um place to like replenish your supplies. Kino. Hmm. Oh, sorry. I didn't notice you here. I was a bit lost in thought there. I've been doing rigorous research day and night to figure out the mysteries of the blood moon. Blood moon? No. You don't know it? That's inexcusable. Listen up and I'll tell you all about it. For a hundred years now, every so often when this clock strikes midnight, the sky turns red and the full moon rises. At that moment, monsters that have been previously defeated will come back to life. Uh -huh. And that's what I, is known as the Blood Moon. So what, from what I understand, uh, all the characters here, their character models are actually like a souped up version of the Wii U uh, me character creator, which is how they get to create so many um, different facial features, face, faces, and haircuts, and and everything, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> do you... Why do monsters return to life? Why does it only happen when the sky turns red? No one really has the answers to those questions. It's a mysterious phenomenon. Oh. If you learn anything about the blood moon as you travel, be sure to come back and tell me. I heard if you cook during a blood moon, you get really good food. Oh. I can give you directions. Uh, no, that's okay. Ah, we have made it into some safety. Can I sit down? But yeah, I, this is where I'm going to end things. Actually, one more thing. One one last thing. Uh, another thing I've never really interfaced with in this game is um, the amiibo thing. You can now use amiibo runes with the Sheikah Slate. You can change this setting on the options screen at any time. So yeah, I've never actually used amiibos in this game because back in the days... Amiibos were new, and um, I wasn't really into Amiibos. I had a friend that collected a lot of them, but I never really got into them, so I never used them for anything. But along the way, at some point, I guess the Amiibos became kind of... The fad kind of went out, and a lot of the Amiibos went on clearance and stuff in all like the stores around where I live. And uh, I eventually just caved and picked up Fox and Falco. And... Um, since they're kind of like some of my favorite characters in Smash and Star Fox and stuff. <laughs> and I think they might be the only ones available too, so I felt a little lucky. <laughs> Maybe they're not as popular as I think they are. <laughs> Especially since there really isn't any new Star Fox games recently. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to try and use a the Fox amiibo and see what happens. From what I understand, if you use Zelda-related amiibos, you get like weapons and skins and certain like i think you might be able to get like a really fancy bow or or something as well but i don't really know what happens if you scan a 
just like a generic or any other franchise's um, amiibo. So yeah, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Are you doing it right now? Anything? Do I need to like activate it? Like a rune? Oh, I do need to activate a rune. Okay. All right, there we go. Why is it Xing me? I'm touching the amiibo. Oh no, this is um. This is a. That was a tutorial, right? Okay. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening, game. Oh, something happened. Ah, uh, just a bunch of food fall down. Ah, meat and some weird mighty thistle. This medic medicinal plant is known for its sharp thorns and for the fruit it bears. The fruit contains a compound that increases attack powers when cooked into a dish. Ah, uh, so it doesn't really give you anything. I thought it might give you, like, I don't know, a weapon or something, just so... I was thinking, like, oh, maybe if I scan Fox, it'll give you, like, a, a weapon or a bow or something. So if I ever, like, get into a tight spot, I'll just scan my amiibo. See what happens. Alright, let's, let's try that again. <laughs> this time with Falco. Ah, it's just more food. Okay, I guess any uh, amiibos outside of the Legend of Zelda franchise just gives you random drops. <laughs> cool Cephalina. This medicinal plant grows in high elevations, such as mountains in the Ebra or Gerudo region. When cooked into a dish, it will temporarily increase your heat resistance. Alright, well I guess that's all I have for you for today. Uh, it was a little bit of a trek. We walked from essentially here. Uh, glided down into this area, made it across here, and here. That's actually quite a distance, <laughs> and it took me an hour and 20 minutes to do so. But yeah, no, we came even further into this area. <laughs> yeah, in the next one, we'll make the rest of the way uh, to here. We'll seek out Impa. We'll probably check out some of the things in this area. And uh, I don't know, from what I understand, you can get a horse in this game. I don't know if this is the point you get it, or um, or how early you can get that. So maybe there will be horse stuff in the next video as well. So yeah, stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you in the next one. Subscribe for more Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wilds. And um, thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>